French band Andochine prepares to take the stage for a good cause. A museum dedicated to Parisian history reopens after a 58 million euro renovation and a collection in Giverny takes visitors for a stroll in nature. All of this coming up in today's show. We're starting off here in Paris where a COVID-19 test concert is set to take place on Saturday. Rock band Andochine will be playing in front of 5,000 people, the first major indoor gathering in France since the pandemic. It's not just about music, though. It's a controlled scientific experiment, one that could help authorities decide when and how to lift the current ban on indoor concerts. Vedika Bahel has this report. One of Paris's largest stadiums has been transformed. Here in the pit, up to 10,000 people are being tested. They're all fans of French rock band Andochine and have volunteered for a very unique experience to see them live. On se sent un peu utile quand même et à petite échelle et c'est sympa. Pour moi, c'était une opportunité de revenir un peu faire la fête en toute sécurité. C'est cool de pouvoir aller voir Andochine. The goal is to select 7,500 spectators aged 18 to 45 who test negative for COVID-19 with no chronic health conditions. 5,000 will be able to attend the concert live and 2,500 others form the control group who will watch from home. Et sept jours après, nous demandons à l'ensemble des participants de s'auto-prélever de nouveau et d'envoyer par la poste le test de J7 salivaire qui est le test important pour comparer Dans les deux groupes, le nombre de cas positifs. The two groups will be picked at random and all volunteers must attend the concert with a mask. The results are being eagerly awaited by entertainment professionals who hope to kickstart the industry after a year's standstill. L'objectif pour nous est de parvenir à effectivement à un résultat qui indique que quand vous suivez un protocole euh, un, un protocole adapté euh, à la situation d'un concert en jauge debout et notamment avec des tests en amont, il n'y a pas de contamination plus importante que quand vous continuez à vivre votre vie normalement. In Barcelona in April, a similar concert experiment was held and researchers found no sign of higher levels of infection. Now, if you're looking for a museum in Paris to celebrate the gradual lifting of COVID restrictions, there's another one you can add to your list. After more than four years of renovations, the Carnavalet Museum is finally reopening on Saturday. It's the oldest museum dedicated to the history of the French capital. Mandy Heshmati and Wasim Kone went to find out more. The City of Lights from prehistory to present day. That is the journey visitors at the Carnavalet Museum will soon be able to embark upon now that the building has finally reopened after four years of renovation. It's the city's oldest museum, home to a jaw-dropping 625,000 works of art and objects, which all tell the story of the French capital. The work done was to improve the building's architecture and to make the museum more accessible thanks to new elevators. This place was so appealing and quaint, but it also had many drawbacks. For example, access was very difficult for disabled people or senior citizens who had a hard time moving around. It discouraged many visitors from coming here. Only half of it was accessible to that group of people. Today, the entire building can be reached by everyone. Younger visitors haven't been forgotten either. Several exhibits have been placed closer to the ground and signaled with red balloons. The museum's identity, though, hasn't changed. Visitors will still find the bedroom of writer Marcel Proust and Marie Antoinette's slipper. But there's one major upgrade. The path through the museum will follow a chronological order. We used to have staggered sections. Visitors would move from one section to the next with no chronological order. Now we begin in the basement and read all about Paris in prehistoric times. And then we make our way up towards the present day. Downstairs is a Middle Ages section where visitors will find stained glass windows from that period as well as remains of the Renaissance. Upstairs, replicas of 18th century hotels, paintings from the Revolution and of parties during the Roaring Twenties, and posters from VE Day. 
The exhibit ends on pictures of less happy times. The Charlie Hebdo attack in 2015, huge crowds looking at the Notre Dame fire in 2019, and empty streets during the first coronavirus lockdown. 2021 is the bicentenary of Napoleon Bonaparte's death. As a part of the commemorations, one museum has organized an exhibition about the controversial figure. Here's a behind-the-scenes look at the efforts to bring this show to life. Napoleon Bonaparte's chariot wheeled out of its home at the Palace of Versailles. Built in 1810 and made from wood, bronze and gold, it's taking center stage at a new Paris exhibit. Upon arriving at its destination, the chariot spent a few days getting acclimatized to avoid a thermal shock. The wood reacts a lot to variations in temperature. Sometimes cracks are already visible, so if there's a huge thermal shock, the crack gets bigger right along. As each new piece arrived, they were unwrapped and thoroughly inspected. Like this Jacques-Louis David painting of Napoleon crossing the Alps commissioned by the emperor himself. He apparently crossed the Alps on a mule, which was more adapted for the terrain. But for his image, he needed to be on a horse. And he wanted to be portrayed calm, on a crazy horse. The exhibition contains over 200 objects and aims to showcase the grandiose while also depicting some ugly realities. This is the original document signed by Bonaparte reinstating slavery. I too was horrified to know he had reinstated slavery. But at the time, no one cared. He did it for economic reasons. Key insight will be provided by historians on topics like slavery, freedom and women's rights. The exhibition will also focus on Napoleonic wars, with visitors getting an immersive experience of life on the battlefield. All these objects, no matter how beautiful, won't be understood by the public if we just display them, because they don't move. So the multimedia helps. This clip of a colonel with his cavalry sets the scene and brings the collection, which you see here, to life. Napoleon's clothes, including his famous bicorn hat, will also be on display. Because of this hat and its unique silhouette, it was recognized by everyone at the time. And even today, all over the world, people know that's Napoleon's hat. The exhibition at the Grande Halle de la Villette is set to run through to the 19th of December. With much of the world having spent a lot of time indoors this past year, a new exhibition in France's Normandy region is putting the focus on gardens and nature. The Museum of Impressionisms in Giverny has put together a temporary show with around 100 paintings, drawings, prints and photos. All of this just down the street from Claude Monet's home. Caris Garland takes a look. 75 kilometres from Paris, Giverny is a garden lover's dream. It's where you'll find the famous garden of Claude Monet, the subject of many of his works, which evoke the tranquility of nature. The Museum of Impressionism is only a few steps away from the artist's home. It too is surrounded by lush greenery and flowers, serving as inspiration for its director. I envisioned this exhibition during the lockdown in March 2020. I figured people wanted to see nature. We've been holed up inside. We want to see gardens. And I thought it made sense to do an exhibition that lasts not four months, but six or seven, so people have time to see it. The exhibition features 120 works combining two visions of the garden, that of the Impressionists and that of the Nabi, a lesser-known group of avant-garde painters from the end of the 19th century. For the Impressionists like Camille Pissarro, painting in nature was a way to capture fleeting moments of light and colour. But for the Nabi like Édouard Vuillard and Pierre Bonnard, working in studios allowed them to reconstruct nature. C'est le cerveau. It's the brain and the eye that reproduce reality, so that's going to give this deliberate simplification of shapes, these solid blocks of colour and these flattened perspectives without the classic depth of field. 
All this is done under the influence of Japanese prints, which were discovered during that period, as well as medieval art. Despite their differences, these two perceptions of the garden are united by color, a sense of harmony that also extends to the blending of nature and culture. Finally, let's wrap up with a photography exhibit called Le Grand Jeu, or The Big Game. The French National Library has gained access to Henri Cartier-Bresson's master collection, his favorite photos among his own work, and has invited five people to pick around 50 pieces and curate them as they see fit. Renowned photographer Annie Leibovitz and art collector François Pinault are among the five guest curators. We'll leave you with a clip of that. Do remember our website. We're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this.